My name is Josh and I'm about to get flamed by the internet as I discuss my personal experience on the current state of the most controversial topic in tech, Mac vs PC. If you're new to my channel, I buy and review a lot of laptops, talk tech and have worked in tech my entire career. Since I recently switched back to Apple with a MacBook Pro 16 for one of my main laptops, the one I use for video editing, I thought now would be the perfect time to discuss this topic. Before we get into it, this is going to be a qualitative video based on my personal experiences. Obviously, this is a controversial topic and I recognize that you may have different experiences. If you feel I've missed something in this discussion, just place it in the comments below. And don't forget, these videos take a long time to make. So if after watching you'd like to show your appreciation, make sure to click that subscribe button, the thumbs up and the notification bell. Firstly, let's roll back the clock a little. I'm going to talk about my personal journey switching between Windows and Mac. At the turn of the century, Apple was falling behind PCs due to lack of performance caused by their reliance on the PowerPC processor rather than Intel line. But in 2006, Apple made the switch, starting to roll out new Intel-based laptops, leveling the performance playing field. Apple was producing phenomenal machines. High-end hardware, upgradable components, plenty of ports, fairly lightweight, and with key innovations like the MagSafe port. Plus, they had a stable, modern operating system. To build on Apple's well-received laptops, Microsoft gave Apple a special gift with the launch of Windows Vista, a highly panned, unstable version of Windows. What followed was the successful Get a Mac campaign that helped define the image of Apple as the computer for people who aspire to be hip and cool and Windows PCs for those who are clueless and lack style. And so after years of Dells and Lenovo's, in 2008, I bought my first Apple laptop, a MacBook Pro 15, as it had the best balance of power and portability. I purchased a new MacBook Pro almost every year since. In 2013 though, I got more seriously into gaming. I found that gaming on the Mac was a poor experience, so started purchasing a second Windows laptop almost every year for gaming. I continued this tradition right up till 2016, when it was Apple's turn to misstep, gifting Microsoft with the launch of the 2016 expensive portless butterfly and touch bar equipped MacBook Pros. I did end up buying the 2016 13-inch non-touch bar MacBook Pro and kept it for some time as my primary device, but I never enjoyed the keyboard. During this time, Microsoft and PC manufacturers were not sitting still. Windows 10 was substantially more unified than Windows 8 and after frequent updates became very stable and applications adapted to new standards including supporting high resolution displays. In addition, Microsoft's bold bets began to mature and became useful including touchscreens, two-in-ones, pen support and Windows Hello biometric login. PC laptop manufacturers also substantially improved the quality of their offerings with several standout devices, including the first Dell XPS 13 with Infinity Display, gaming laptops with high refresh rate displays like the Razer Blade, or the incredible Surface Book 215, which at the time balanced powerful components in a high quality chassis. Noticing these improvements on my secondary Windows gaming laptop, in 2017, I decided to fully switch back to only Windows PC laptops. But 2019 was a rough year for Windows laptops. After purchasing so many and returning them due to loud fans, poor build quality and frequent crashing, the MacBook Pro 16 was released. A substantial return to form for Apple. Almost identical form factor to the older 15 inch but with a larger 16 inch screen, improved keyboard, new powerful components, great speakers and more storage for the same price. So I bought one. Well, it's now 2020 and this is exactly what I feel is the current state of Mac laptops versus PC laptops. CPU performance. To be honest, Apple, especially in their MacBook Pro 16, does an excellent job of getting the most performance out of a slim machine drawing only 100 watts of power. And the same does apply into their smaller machines like the MacBook Pro 13, but of course drawing less power. Sure, there are PC laptops whose CPU performance is a little better, but in my mind it's marginal and not worth the trade-off in size, weight and of course fan noise. Check my Aero 17 HDR Cinebench scores compared to the MacBook Pro 16. That being said, if it's pure CPU performance, then we have to give this one to the PC. Gaming performance. It goes without saying that Windows dominates. Not only do PCs have access to high-end gaming and video graphics cards, but also games run better under Windows on the same hardware as when they are run on Mac OS X. 
Fan noise, it's a win to the Mac. Of all the PC laptops I've tested, and I'm including the Surface Book 2, Surface Laptop 3, Dell XPS, Razer Blade, nothing is as quiet as the Mac. Plus, you have excellent fan control apps available to customize the fan curve if you do want the fans to run more for better performance. Build quality, and another win to the Mac. Seriously, even the Surface Laptop 3 can't compete. Display, this one I'd actually give to the PC. Mac lovers don't get too angry, hear me out. There are some absolutely incredible high resolution color accurate screens available for PC laptops. I personally believe the Aero 17 HDI has the best display on any laptop I've used and I've used a lot. Additionally, PC laptops have the option of fast refresh rate and OLED screens as well as touch screens. Trackpads, Apple still wins here. I've used some of the best Windows trackpads, including on the Razer Blade and the Surface lineup. The Mac is still more accurate and the only laptop that I would consider no need to carry a mouse at all. Keyboards, just like Apple owns the trackpad category, Windows laptops dominate the keyboard category. You get access to the best keyboards on the market, including those from the Lenovo ThinkPad range and the Surface lineup. These have deeper and more satisfying travel than even the new MacBook Pro 16. Plus, you'll be able to choose from a massive range of external keyboards, including mechanical ones. Also, and importantly, if you are logging into a corporate work environment using Citrix, you'll most likely find your Windows keyboard layout will match the computer you're remotely accessing. You won't have to struggle with the muscle memory of using a Mac keyboard layout at home and a Windows one at work. Yes, I know you can remap keyboards to work on Mac OS, but it's definitely not as usable. Mouse, even though Apple dominates the trackpad category, they don't dominate the mouse category. Apple's mice by default use mouse acceleration, which applies a curve to accelerate the mouse as you move it. For anyone who is used to a mouse on a PC, this can feel very discomforting, especially when gaming, where predicting the acceleration curve is almost impossible and quite frustrating. To make matters worse, macOS does not provide an easy way to disable this. What also sucks is that Apple natively combines certain settings applying them both to the trackpad and the mouse. For example, scrolling direction. On the trackpad, natural scrolling is the normal way to scroll, while on the mouse, inverted is the most common. What this means is for most users, you will need to change a couple of settings and perhaps install some third-party apps to have the mouse work as expected. I personally find this whole thing a pain. Ports. With PCs, you get to choose from laptops with a wide array of ports. No need for dongle life. Want a laptop with an SD card reader? No problem. Sound quality. Apple wins. In fact, Apple destroys the PC here. The MacBook Pro 16 speakers are on a completely different level. Stability. It's a slight win for the Mac. Windows 10, with all its updates, has definitely come a long way. But over the past 12 months, I've had only one system crash on my Mac, and maybe twice the touch bar has locked up. Compare that to numerous blue screens and other odd issues like this one on my Dell XPS 9370, which every time it boots, thinks I have no SSD unless I manually select the SSD by pressing F12 when the laptop is booting. WTF. That being said, some PC laptops have been noticeably more stable than others, like the Razer Blade Studio, which didn't crash at all in the month I owned it. Ecosystem, pros and cons of each. Yes, the Mac is super easy to use if you're using all Apple devices, but on a PC, you aren't tied down to the Apple ecosystem and you still have great alternatives like using messages.google.com in your browser instead of iMessage if you're using an Android phone. Additional capabilities. Even though the MacBook Pro does have the touch bar, which I personally don't mind, and Touch ID, Windows laptops have more additional features available, including touchscreens, pen support, face login, and even a 1080p webcam in the Surface Book 215. Price. It's a win for the Windows PCs. Generally, for similar hardware, Windows laptops are still cheaper. Even if Apple did give us more bang for our buck with their new MacBook Pro 16, which now starts with a 512GB drive rather than the paltry 256GB in the older model it replaced. Just take this Dell XPS 15 versus the MacBook Pro 16. For a 32GB, 1TB SSD model, the Dell is around $2,200 for the 8-core model. The Apple is around $3,200, $1,000 more. Also, what's wonderful about PC laptops is you have a wealth of options at any price level. You can purchase a cheap 15-inch laptop for under $1,000 that is very capable with decent quality. That simply isn't possible with Apple. 
And lastly, the applications that the laptop comes with. I have to give this one to Apple. The applications that the MacBook Pro comes with are superior to the ones that Windows comes with. For example, the Photos app, which is much better than the Windows alternative. Out of the categories I looked at, Windows laptops actually won more, but that is because I was comparing the best of all the wide range of PC laptops to the MacBook Pro, which clearly isn't fair. So enough of this nonsense, let me sum up with some real recommendations. If you are doing any AAA gaming, get a Windows laptop. If you are doing a ton of Excel work, get a Windows laptop. If you plan to frequently log into a corporate Windows environment via Citrix, I'd advise you to get a Windows PC laptop as the remap keys can get rather annoying. If you want a big screen laptop for sub $2,000, then it's a PC laptop for you. If none of the above is you, then you've got a choice on your hands. If you are super fussy like me and have no tolerance for things like fan noise, PWM flickering on the display, low build quality or crashing, I'd strongly recommend getting a MacBook. For programmers, photo or video editors, I'd also strongly suggest you consider a Mac laptop. But if you just want the most powerful components for your buck, then Windows laptops are still the way to go. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. If you'd like to get chatting or think I've missed something, put it in the comments below. Till next time, I'll catch you later.